Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Um, today we're going to go through and open a Ender 3 V3, just a plain V3. Uh, it is the top of the range of the Ender series that Crowley have just released. And I won it in a competition, so um, I haven't paid for it. But I did have to enter a competition to win it. And the competition was a 10th anniversary video where you just told them about what you've done with Creality and I got um, second place. So I won a printer. So I'm going to go through and open it. It did have a few little hitches um, when I was putting it together. So I um, had a bit of a jam in the extruder. So um, follow along and I actually pulled the extruder apart to get the jam out and show you how to do all that. Um, but after I got that together, everything went fine and I did some perfectly smooth prints along the way. So we, ground, we printed this... Um, there we go. Okay. Your phone holder that collapses down just to test the tolerance, and we also printed a living camera holder for the new Nebula camera, which I've got. And I'm going to plonk on that. So I didn't want to print a benchy because what are you going to do with a benchy? I've got hundreds of them. I decided to print some um, some practical items, and we go through what. Um, how the um, printer came underneath. So um, all in all, um, just to thank you, Creality, for holding the competition so I could win this, um, this printer. So um, we'll get into it. But before we get into it, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, uh, lots of people watch, but don't subscribe. What are you doing? Can you guys, help me out here. <laughs> OK, let's get into it. Thanks, guys. Okay, so let's look from the box and see what's in it. Pull it all out and then do a test print. Okay, fine. Awesome. There's a print head, I can see it straight away. Oh, jeez, it's back in there. The um, spoon out. Display. The display is the same as the. Um, K1C and K1 Max, which is nice. Oh, yeah. Nice big display. I like their displays. Any displays are great. Instruction manual, and you get the um, stickers you get now. So that's pretty cool. I do like their little sticker pack. Creality, come on. What am I going to do with that? Honestly. But, mind you, it does lower the price of the printer down. Probably 50 bucks because they charge about that for there. So I can understand why they've done it. Fair enough. Um, so a lot of people would prefer to pay a bit less. Now these I love. These are great quality. You've done a really good job with these. These are to get clogs out of extruders and stuff. So basically, actually I'll show you when um I'll show you when I put it together how to get it. But basically you pull the filament. You've probably got a clog in there, so where the filament goes, you push this down, you open the extruder up and you push it all the way down, it gets clogs out of your nozzle. Allen key kit and spanner, some screws, some Allen keys, a pair of your old pliers you always get, um, some grease, and a USB. It's cool. all you, but that's all pretty standard for a... Um, printer. Guys, if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe. Bowden tube. Power cable. Now I've seen these online. I've seen Sam Prentice with these. These are spring-loaded filament holders so the filament doesn't unspool itself. I think it's a good idea. So, first part. Entry, get that over there. Get all this foam out of here. Okay, how compact is that? Well, I've seen them online, but this is wow, Crowley, you've done really well with that. That is tiny nowadays. 
I'm liking the new design. But compared to the old days with big chunky bunky, this is cool. How compact. I really like that. I'm really impressed. Okay. Alright, so the gantry ba basically fits in these areas here. So the sides here. And the front is away from the cable, but where the um, display goes. So I'll put the gantry on first, that's the main thing. Make sure it's fronting, fronting, facing forward. Wow, that is compact. Well, I'm comparing it to the older printers I used to have. Yeah, I do like it. Okay. Where those screws are in here. Time to get out the old... Um, I'll put that, I'll just conveniently put that there in case anyone forgets. Okay, okay, before I do anything, sorry, where's the power switch at the side? Here? Yeah, okay, so before you put on, before you put on the gantry, make sure that your power switch is set to the right um, voltage. You don't want to blow your motherboard up by having it at the wrong voltage. So that is, as you're looking at the front, it's on the left-hand side. Okay, because this will sit right over it. So once you've got this on, you ain't going to be able to change it. <laughs> What does this say? This says, please ensure the correct. Oh, there you go. <laughs> They've got a little sticker on it. Probably right where a bolt goes to, I reckon. <coughs> so, where the bolts get the side here? Oh, oh, that's even better. Okay, so back in the old days, you used to have to put bolts up, the bo the, up through the bottom of the gantry. But I don't think. Oh, there's two going up there, too. Okay. So we've got two up, two in the bottom and two in the in the front, I would say. How many bolts we got? Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Cool. Okay, I get some of my own little ones up further. <sighs> Sorry about the grunt and stuff, guys. I've got a bad back. It's just, um, I can't really do anything with it. Okay, oh, hang on, better replace that. Can you all see it? That like and subscribe. <laughs> Just sort of, um, to, to make any money on YouTube um, with, um, like, ads and stuff that they pay you for, if you get an ad on this video, I'm not getting paid for it. Because, um, you got to have a thousand subscribers before they'll pay for it, pay you for it. It's not much. <laughs> Trust me, the amount of viewers I get, it's not much. But it helps pay for things like filament and stuff. So if I could get up to a thousand subscribers, that would allow me to, um, you know, get more filament, post more videos of stuff. Um, if you haven't seen me in the um, forums, in the Creality forums, I'm... Um, posted every day in the forums so it's well worth getting into the forums um, they'll have a forum for this printer basically every printer they've got a forum for they've got a forum for the store so they've got a store forum that I'm a um, expert user on not a user um, group expert on so I help out people online there also in this if you're from Australia I'm on the um, Australian Creality Australian site too and I post there just about every day so if you're not a member of the forums on Facebook guys jump on in say hello um, and for those that prefer to just do YouTube stuff did you know that Creality does a live stream every week well just about every week um, they're not doing one next week because they've got a holiday on Wednesday they do them every Wednesday um, and there's a lovely lady called Zora that runs most of them and good old Kevin helps out and you've got Op Optimus who all these people um, jump in and help out a lot so Kevin and Zora are the main ones that do do the live stream and they do a great job nice and friendly and what's the really good thing they do giveaways 
So this printer here, I actually won on a competition um, that Creality held for just videos, just saying about your um, your Creality, why you like Creality and what you think, um, you know, when you first got your first Creality printer and stuff. So I did a video and I posted it. It took me, I just spent a day. I hopped on my motorbike and I zipped around Perth and took a few videos. And no, I'm not an expert video user, uh, producer at, at, by any means. But I took this video and I posted it up and I won a $700 and, what, $770 printer. How cool is that? Just for doing a little video. Um, but they, they do giveaways where all you need to do is, is just put your name on a form and they spin a wheel and if you're really lucky you can win a printer because they gave um, they give printers away they give um, lots of filament away lots of t-shirts away and stuff like that but it's not just um, you don't just like have t-shirts and, and filament all the time majority what the hell is that for? oh that's for that majority of time you um, you get that as well as printers so anyway sorry I, did, I was talking too much forgot so at the sides here at the sides here there's, at the top of the motors there's a little cable that just plugs in only goes in one way and there's one on each side and then as you're putting these here this little cable that runs from the gantry plugs into this little cable here. They only, there's, there's only one place the cables can go. <laughs> when you look at them, there's only, they, they're only fitting in one area. And they'll only go one way because on the plugs, I'll do it on a bigger plug. Oh, I'll do it around the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so on the plugs, if you look at the plugs, these plugs here have little ridges on one side and it's smooth on the other. The ridges go towards the open end. So let me get you in here. So on the plug here, you'll see there's an open end where my finger is, and there's a closed end on that side. And on the plugs, there's ridges on one side, which is this side, and the other side's flat, plus you can see some um, gold little bits on there. So that's the flat bit, and that just plugs in with the ridges towards the open bit of the plug just plug it in like that so that um is that all cool let me just here i am okay so uh like and subscribe i'm going to sort of push that a little bit because i'm not getting many subscribers um now this long cable This long cable needs to go on the head, no doubt. Let's get rid of that foam bit. Where's it going? I usually go on top. There's a plug right there. And that will go over to, okay. So the very end of the plug goes in the print head. Same sort of, oh, it's a different sort of plug. So this plug has a little clip. So when you um, plug it in, it actually locks in place where the others just push in place and that you've got to push the top of it to release it so that goes in same way that little plug goes towards the um, open bit of the socket you're putting it into let's not twist it let's try and go there we go it's just the way i'm sitting i can't stand up my back has hurt too much so i know what that does there now the other bit on the cable there's another little plug there I'm gathering that's going to be for this um, filament runout sensor. Yes, it is. I can see it right there. So on the side here, you've got another plug. On the fillet, this is a filament runout sensor here. Plug it in. That's it. It's all cabled up, ready to go. Now, there's one thing I will do. Oh, no. Hang on. <laughs> Ain't going to go nowhere if I can't see the display. So you rip this little bit of tape off the front. Shut that. The pile. I need to put my display on. So the display, it's got a little ribbon cable here. Okay, so when you put the display on, the thicker bit goes down the bottom. 
Now, <clears throat> these little lugs here, got two little lugs on this thing here, they go into these two little holes. There's nowhere else it can go really. Then you push it down, push it in, push it down, and it locks in place. And then the, well that's just hitting, so I haven't pushed it down far enough. So, ah, yeah, it wriggles in. Okay, that should be enough now. Okay, don't pull this too hard because you're sending cut, it does generate current if you move it really quick and it'll send it back down through into the motherboard. You don't want that happening. So I'm just slightly pulling it and making sure it's not hitting this display, which it's not. Just make sure it's down all the way. This little thing here fits on top of where the cable is here. So you see the cables just dangling around there. So it's got a little top that fits on there. I saw it earlier and I wondered what it was. And then when I was putting that cable in, I realized what it was. So they've got a few things in this boat bag. I'll show you what they are. So this is a little bit here, and it just basically is going to clip in. Hmm, which way is it going to go? That way. Okay, so it's got a little round bit at the one end and a flat bit at the other. The round bit goes towards the cable, of course, and that's just going to push in right there and hold that in place. Cool. And you also get these little things. So these are guides. Can run stuff along here and what that's going to do hold that Bowden tube in place I'll show you so the Bowden tube <coughs> is basically to give the filament a free run into the print head because it's coming from the side here so what you do is for a start the cable goes in the little clip, they've got a little clip here right on the uh, filament run out switch and that clips in there give it a bit, it's got to come all the way over there so you've got to make sure it's got enough length without pulling on anything <coughs> then the Bowden tube is basically here to give the filament a nice run into the print head so the extruder is in the print head so it's a direct drive so it's made to fit on the side here but I'm not going to use that I might use that in one of my other printers because I'm going to use my filament dryer that I won. <coughs> so I won a filament dryer in another competition that Crowley held um, around Christmas time. What was that for? Oh yeah, just post the model you printed. I didn't design it, I just printed it and I posted it up. Got third place. And I won a fil filament dryer. So these are all the things that Crowley do which um, I haven't noticed many other um, manufacturers do is, you know, some are starting to, but Creality has really gotten into it and done the online stuff. And you can win heaps of stuff online. It's just, it's great. Lots of people have won printers and won filament. And I, I jump on every Wednesday morning. It's Wednesday morning in Perth, so I don't know what it is where, wherever you are. I think it's Wednesday night in um, the US. <coughs> Alright, so, so basically the way, so that's all it does, you just run the filament of uh, the Bowden tube, which is this plastic tube that you got, through those little things and they clip onto the um, cable and it lifts the cable out of the way as well. So, basically if this was sitting at the side here, with a spool holder, so the way it goes, sorry, I should show you is basically this goes in and just twists on and now it's connected and then these two little screws at the side on the when you're from the front the right hand side they will just so it fits so it's got one of those little so you fit them in there and then you push it up and it holds it in place so boom, so it's in place now and this fits over there like so and it's it's spring loaded so as the filament wears down it keeps tension on it you can see how it's spring loaded there. Okay, so you put your filament on, you put that on over the top of the filament. I get the thing of filament. So here's a roll of filament I won in one of Creality's competitions. So I won this um, on the forums. What did I win it for? Um, what was on the forums that I won it for? Oh, yeah. So every month they have a 
show us what you printed. So I showed them what I printed, and then they have a. It's not the best print. Um, it's the, um, it's just a random draw. So they have a little spinny wheel, one of those electronic ones that um, randomly picks someone. So everyone that's posted a print that they've done for the month goes into the draw, and it randomly picks someone, and those people will win a fifty Australian dollar roll of filament. So. I got a, this is the best filament, I'll tell you. On the faster printers, this um, Hyper Series filament is really, really good. And I suspect that little um, filament stash that Crowley DA, this will be Hyper Filament as well. Because if they want to demonstrate their printers and get the best um, out of it, it's going to be the Hyper Series. So that will go on to there. And this will go either side of your filament and see how that fits in there and just puts a little bit of tension on, not much. It's enough to stop the filament coming over the sides and getting tangled. Because sometimes you get filament wrap and it comes over the side like that, especially when it's a full roll. And then you get it curling up like that, like that and causing a jam. So what this does is when you got it down there, it stops it coming out. So that's a pretty good idea. Mm. Oh. Okay. Next thing you do is cut on a 45 degree angle, like so. I will know I haven't opened the manual yet. <laughs> and then what you do is up through the bottom, they've got this little tube sticking out the bottom here. Don't know if you can see it. I'm not, don't let go. Once you've cut the filament, don't let go of the filament. So, can you see the little bit of tubing sticking up the bottom here? At the bottom of the filament run out sensor. So, basically, oh, so I will say the reason you don't let go of this is because if you get it let go and it flings back, it can cross under like something like that. That happens sometime during the print of this spool you'll get a jam and it's a pain in the butt because then if the um, hot end usually gets a clog in it because there's filament sitting in there and heating and heating and heating and not moving so once you've, once you've undone it from the, the little catches at the side you don't let go until you've got it inside that Bowden tube because <clears throat> once I've got it inside the Bowden tube I can let go because it's not going to go anywhere but <clears throat> I want to feed it up through here. Keep going, keep going, and just feed, feed it until it gets to the end. What I'm going to do is just take it out of there. So this is the way I load filament. I undo the Bowden tube like so. <coughs> so you get about oh, half a finger's length of filament coming out. I unlock the extruder, so unlocking the extruder is moving it to the right. Then I feed the filament into the print head and I squish it down in there until I cannot let it go. And I'll make sure it's straight ish. So it's going straight in. Push it in there till it can't go anymore. Then I push the bone tube back in and I'm going to have the most success of that catching inside the extruder now close the um, switch so the switches I'm talking about is this little switch on top here so that um, locks and unlocks the extruder it's got a little um, lock and unlock little symbol on top there so oh, I'm gonna, okay don't rest it Oh, don't lock that in place obviously okay let's try that okay cool okay, so power plug in the back should I read the instructions I'm thinking no but you should and you should do it right after you <laughs> I can subscribe okay let's um so I had to make this up because I keep forgetting to ask people to like and subscribe. So with this little tool here, 
that comes with the Creality kits now. <clears throat> what I meant to say before, I might as well take this out and show you. So if you've got a, a clog in your print head, you pull this out, you push it down inside your print head here, make sure it's unlocked, so unlock it, push it out and then you force it and, just, ah, and it will push any filament jams out. So that's the way to use that little tool, which is really good. You gotta put this back in now. It's unlocked, pushed all the way in, lock it up. Okay, so I get my grubby fingerprints off here so you can see it a bit better, guys. So basically all I'm using is a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol. Because I've touched the um, the bed, I'm gonna have it's gonna have some oil on it from my fingers. So I'm just gonna give it a quick spray of isopropyl alcohol as well. Just run it over. I will say that on the bed is a magnetic um, textured plate. So it's a textured plate, which is cool. Um, I'm gonna put it in English because that's my language. I don't know how to speak any other language. I wish I did, but I don't. Have a read of the policy, make sure you agree with it, then push, I have read. Next. I'm gonna set up the network. Okay, so yep, that tells me my IP address. It's cool. I'm in a plus eight time zone, so I'm on the same time zone as China, which is cool because um, when they have live streams and stuff, I don't have to worry about. Um, I'm on a uh, international. Well, into the self check. Okay, so it's going to go through a self check. So while it's doing this, you can't touch it. And I will say I've got it on this um, little bench here for the video, and. Um, what I don't want to do is have the same settings when I move it to its final resting place, which is in my garage, because um, of course the environment's going to change and the, the bottom's a bit sturdier in the garage. So I'll have to run this again once I move it. Okay, and it's going to go through all the setup and stuff it needs to go through. Oh, this on the side. There you go. Gonna run through a few tests. While it's doing the tests, guys, it's telling you on the screen what it's doing. So it's doing some input shaping now, so it's just basically um figuring out vibrations and all that sort of stuff so it can um, compensate for the vibration of what the machine's sitting on when it's printing. So while it's doing that, it's um Run through some of the specs. I'm sure it's going to be very back and forth. It's um, now getting ready to take off by the sound. Of it. That doesn't happen when it's printing, <laughs> that only happens when it's doing input shaping. We have a 200 by 200 bed, so 200 by 200 by 250 height is what um, the print area is. It's got a 0.2 millimeter precision, so um, plus or minus precision on your model, so that's how much tolerance it's got. You've got the nozzle that will heat to 300, and the bed will heat to 110 degrees Celsius. So the bed's 10 degrees hotter than what most of them do. It takes PLA, TPU, PETG, ABS, PLA, CF, so carbon fibre, PETG, carbon fibre. It says it will do it because of the heat, but some of them you really should have it in an enclosure, like ABS you probably don't want to do out in the open. You definitely don't want to do it inside an enclosed room. You want a lot of um, ventilation for your ABS, and maybe some of the carbon fibre ones would be better in a housing. You can buy housings, of course, to go sit this in. Um, the power rated is 350 watts, 10 and 240 volts. Um, of course, you've got your filament runout sensor there, which I, some people don't like it. I don't know why. So, I love the filament runout sensor because when the filament runs out, your print pauses and allows you to change to another filament. So, um, you don't really have to keep a really good eye on the filament, how much is on there, because 
if you come back next and try now to film it, just load another film and continue on. A few moments later. Okay, so if you didn't have the filament run out sensor, when you run out of filament and you haven't noticed it, your print's dead. Um, it's also got power loss recovery, so if you lose power, it will recover the print when the power comes back on. You can recover it. You can just say, just resume once the power comes back on. Of course, you can do LAN printing. That's why we had to set up the network. It does run Clipper. So this is a Clipper-based system, which is why you get the speed out of it. Let me just, I'm just going through the, just going through the little manual. <laughs> Just to check if I haven't forgotten to tell you anything. Uh, see, the manual's pretty detailed. It tells you with pictures and everything exactly what to do when you're setting up your print. It even states right at the beginning, you've got no excuse. This is the power. Where it's telling you to make sure you got on the right power. It's on the, in the English, it's on the second page of instructions. So, no excuse, guys. <laughs> okay. Like and subscribe, please. You're still watching. <laughs> Can anyone guess what model I might be making here? Does that look familiar? She's a movie star. I'm doing a Tomb Raider. So, it's a bit bigger, as you can see in my hand. The kid's a bit bigger than I thought they were going to be. But like with all the models I do, they're always a bit bigger than what I thought they were going to be. And if they're small, I make them bigger. <laughs> so now it's going to go through and it's doing the auto bed leveling. And then we'll get a print going. So basically what it does when it goes with the auto bed leveling, it's got a sensor inside the head. I think it's got some sensors here. Yeah, it's got some sensors on the board here. And it just puts a bit of pressure along different points along the board and then it records the depth and stuff it's at so it can adjust while it's printing it. But you adjust the print so you get a more smooth print. Okay, all done. So the self checks all done. So now we're going to go. Okay, so there's got new firmware. It's just selling the screen here. So I'm going to download it and let that update. A few moments later. Off oh, here, please recalibrate. Now you gotta go through that calibration again and do both of them. Okay, and prove it and why it goes again. The best to get it done and do all these tests and stuff right at the very start. Therefore, you got all the latest fixes and stuff to do. Might take another 15 minutes, but you know. It's better than having a print come out and cost you your money to the the filament and stuff up. A few moments later. Okay, so that's now finished. Let's hope there's not another update. Get back now. now what I want to do is extrude some filament out of the extruder. Just make sure that it's engaged properly. So if you go to the second icon down. Now let's get you in a bit closer. Okay, so if you go to this icon here, the second one down, the little lines there, and you've got extrude up the top here. Yeah, that's a bit wonky. Yeah. Extrude up the top, and you go extrude. So when you're removing filament, use the retract option here, and let it heat up the, the print head. It'll, it'll um, extrude a little bit out, but then it'll retract the filament. So you can just unlock the extrude and pull the filament out without it being caught in the head. That's the proper way to get change your filament. Okay, so we'll extrude here. Whenever you put in a new piece of um, filament, a roll of filament, always extrude. That just makes sure that you've got it in. If you, and if it doesn't extrude any, you need to push it, the filament in a bit further. Okay. I don't like that layer it showing me. What the hell's going on? 2112. exception. Okay. okay. So the head's heated up. So while the head's heated up, let's find out what's going on. Let's pull it out. I just reckon I didn't have it in far enough. No, it hasn't been tried. Okay, let's try it again. I've done something wrong that side. I just haven't got it in. What the hell's going on? Alright, you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm gonna use my little um tool that I showed you earlier. Oh, look at that, it's got some filament in it. I reckon, um, well I know they do tests on all their printers, I reckon it just had a bit of, you see the bit of, okay. I reckon I've just um, used this little tool and I've got filament sitting on the end of it. So when they, um, get that filament off, I'll put it again. When they, um, it, it's in factory, they actually test it by running a print on each printer before it goes out. So anyone that thinks that Creality is testing crap, no, it's not. Um, it's more than likely something's happened during transport of stuff. You print it up if you've got it and it's not working. So here, I just need to make sure the print head's still hot. Yep. So you got to make sure the print head's hot when you do this. Just push it in, push it down, keep pushing, keep pushing, and you get a filament out of it. Okay. Now, now let's see if I can push it through. Now let's see again. Try again. Try again. Oh, I'm not going to so you um, go extrude. Extrude some more. So there's a stop. Sure, that's locked in. This is that doesn't sound good. There we go, make the four things. I'll pull that print head off and what the hell's going on. So, I reckon. You get a filament, bit of filament in the head and then it's got caught. So that's what going to need here. Yeah, pull a few things off. It sounds like it's caught in the extruder. No, it said it's finished, okay. But we know it hasn't finished. So, let's um, turn it off. Unplug it. Oh, that's not. That's not going to be the right one. This one. Okay. Okay, so the print head has got two little screws either side of it, which you can just undo. Not very long, they're only short. This side. Find out what the hell's going on in this extruder. Should just lift up, I would think. Can't see any other screws. Something's getting caught somewhere. Okay. <clears throat> so something's getting caught inside that extruder there, so I'm gonna have to open that up. Just pull this off. Oh, come on. Don't ever pull it by the um by the cable, ah, oh, that's why. Okay, it's gonna be glue. Use glue to hold it on. Just cut that 
little off. There you go. I use um, hot glue just to hold it on. There's three screws holding the board on here, so it's got three screws on here that'll need to come off. Let's get them off. And that, uh, only small ones. There we go. It's hoping they'd be long screws hold the extruder in place. I'm just going to get it all out and we'll go. There's the extruder. Okay, and then there's um, some black screws in here that need to come out. So there's one screw and another one. How does that come off? This little guard here seems to be in the way. Screws on the side. Oh, man. oh it's just so hard with my back. Screw. Just remember um, where everything came from. Shouldn't be too hard, guys. Undo that ribbon cable there. There you go. Oh, so many bloody screws. That's the one bad thing about um. <laughs> Having speed, you've got to bolt everything down, so disconnect the parts. Ah, there we go. <clears throat> One more glass screws on the side here. I gather the um, cable, power cable to the extruders, um, the thing that's getting in the way. Everything. So there's two screws on the side of the back bit as well. So I'll just undo them. Hopefully the whole lot will come off then. Though I can see little holes up the top here too. Okay. more screws oh that might be the bit at the front uh, maybe that's what it is uh, might just be there's two back screws here as well that might be what's holding that little thing on the front there I'm thinking no it's not. but it's holding that back plate on and can get the extruder out now. Let's find out where the problem is. There's a problem in here. Hmm. It's been the extruder. That's not letting nothing through, is it? Okay, it appears to be something caught in the extruder so I'm gonna have to disconnect that and pull the extruder apart. Right. 
Okay, so <clears throat> I'll find that. Yeah, it's not in the print head, so it's in the extruder. Something's got caught. So the extruder has to come apart. The extruder just has two screws on it, one on each side here. Let's undo that. Might keep the extruder screws separate from the rest. Try and keep your screws in little piles of where you took them out from. Okay, so after you've got the bolts out, um, you then sort of wiggle it out and wiggle it around like that. And that's what's caused the jam. You just see that little bit of filament there? Break off. I think I'll be right now. Okay, now that that bit of filament's out, I've checked everywhere else. There's no other bits of filament in there. That's just one of those things that happens. It's got, it's not a Corality thing. Well, I'm not going to say it's a Corality thing because I don't think it is. Now I'm going to put it all back together. So once you've got the extruder, you put the, um, once you've got the cogs and stuff clear, then put the extruder back on. It's not hard. I'm going to put it back on so the wires are facing up. Then you just put it back in, lining up the hole here with the hole down the bottom there. Hole oh, should just slide in, and then that hole should go in, oh, like that, <laughs> inside there. So the little, um, there's a little post sticking up, which is part of the print head, um, that goes inside the hole that I just showed you. So now I get the long screws. Actually, what I might need to do, put this screw through first. Actually, I'll screw them both together first. Don't need them. Don't need it in to screw that together. So the two long screws you took out earlier can go back in before you put the extruder all the way inside there. Okay, that's a pain, but you know these things happen. Don't be scared to pull it apart. If um, it's just remembering where the bolts go, and if you've done a um, if you've done a video like I'm doing now, then what's good about that is if you can't remember, just watch the video back again, and it'll show you. But when you take the screws out, show the screws to the camera um, when you're doing it. So at least you remember which way the sc which screws go in where. And do them all the way up, nice and tight. One side, one side. Don't wrench them so you strip the bolt. That would not be good. Then once again, so I'm lining the little hole up here inside the extruder with the little pole that's coming out the bottom there, and that pole will go in that little hole. A bit like then my female connection. It's got to wiggle it around a bit till it slips in there, yeah. Now these cables can fit inside there. I don't need them sticking up. They can wiggle down there somewhere. In you go. Mm, maybe the cable's meant to go down. Oh, it doesn't matter. So this ribbon cable it attached to the front of that. So I plug the cables in now while I can get easy access to the wall. What was that one? Oh yeah, I know what that was for. Slide that back on. Okay, the silver ones I remember go on the motherboard. Or the daughter board or whatever they call it nowadays. And they got ones that go up and down the sides. There's some that go in there. Okay. Now. 
See, all it is, it's just undoing and doing up screws. There's no soldering, there's no, they're all plugs, they're all, it's really easy. So don't be scared to, um, just pull it, if you have to pull the extruder apart, just pull it apart. They work, they're easy, easy. I can't remember if I had a small or a big one. Probably a small one, I'd say. Looks good. I'll find out soon enough. Put the tails back in. Don't ever push on the cable. Make sure you're pushing just on the plastic of the of the plug. If you're doing it with a instrument at all, that's all done. Plug the fan back in for this. Get him out of there. Yep. And put it back on. Put the little side screws in. Okay, let's go with that. See how that goes. <coughs> so, in the folder, so the third icon down, what should we print? Now, I'm going to get you in a bit closer. We have a look. We've got all these to print if we want. Scraper, spool guide. Ah, oh, I wonder if that's the spool guide for the top. Hmm, don't know. I've <coughs> oh, got the funky looking um, cube. We've got a phone stand. Cam. Oh, camera mount. Yeah, maybe I'll do a camera mount. Yeah, I've got an, I've got, I bought a nebula camera that I'll, I'm going to do the camera mount because that will be useful. Like so. Do calibration before we um, print, so you can turn the calibration on and off. I, mean, I always do it. Can't hurt. It adds a couple of minutes to it, but um, I don't care. I much prefer a print come out nicely and print. <coughs> well, him. So it's going for inverse calibration now. Just doing bed levelings. So once you've done it and you've got a good print out of it, you probably don't need to do calibration again until you change something or move it or something like that, you know. But you can see it won't take long to do. If I've got a really important print that I don't want to farm, I will do a um, calibration before it to make sure that it's um everything's right for it goes. Okay, so it's finished print. Let's have a look. Oh, it's coming right off the hill plate. It's nice. Well, can't see any banding there. It's um, I mean, it's really nice. Oh, the um, the overhangs. Not for we could have probably done with um support over here but didn't put any in so i just wanted to see how it went nice um finish from the board in there but the top the top um overhang was okay just the bottom bit that's a bit but expect that even though supports 
in the surface is beautiful okay now so the fact that the whole thing was wobbling around like crazy made no difference to the print okay let's try another print like the mirror there um don't forget to like and subscribe please okay so we'll do another one i'm going to do the phone holder All right let's go with the phone holder so that will show me tolerances because it's going to be a um, print one thing. So what it will do is uh, print that all that and it should pop out and move around all by itself. Let's have a look how it goes. Print. Well, I haven't calibrated this time because um, nothing's moved since the last print. So it should just print away, no problem at all. Um, when this one was printing, uh, my camera ran out of battery. I'm using an Osmo Pocket 3 to record this. Um, so the battery ran out, so I couldn't get the rest of it printing, but we'll run this one all the way through, see how it goes. Okay, so this will be a good torrent to test one. Okay, finish we have done. Let's have a look at it. Right, okay. Now, typically, you'd let it cool down before you pull it off the plate. Very right. patient for a minute. Look. So, I'm just going to pull the plate off, flex it. And then you've got your, oh, look at that. How cool is that? And smooth as. Oh, that was good print. So I've done nothing to it. Default settings. And there's my phone speaker. So that's it clutched up. That's going really nice. Well, guys, I'm very impressed with this print so far. Um, apart from the little hiccup I had at the very start with um, the filament caught in the crimp head, oh not the printer, the gears, well, it, it will, hmm. so if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe my video, and um, I'll be doing in probably the next few days, or sometime hopefully over the next week, in comparison between this one, the Ender 3 V3, and maybe yeah, the K1C, see how that goes. Because um, basically this has pulled some of the stuff from the K1C. It just seems to have a similar print head. It's definitely got the same screen. Um, so front and clipper, both front and clipper. So we'll see how they both go against each other. Okay, guys, so what did you think? Uh, I was pretty impressed with it. Apart Apart from the little bit of filament they got caught in the extruder, but there's a catch-22. Either don't test them and send them out brand new and you've got lots out there that fail, or occasionally you get a bit of filament caught in from your testing, which does happen every now and again, and you get the person like me, <laughs> they get the print that doesn't work. Um, so you get a lot less um, faults and stuff if you test them already, and the occasional one that gets a bit of filament caught in it. Um, like I said, when I was pulling it apart, there's not much to them. They're just a few nuts and bolts holding holding bits together. You're just going to screws, remember where they went. And if you're taking video while you're doing it, then you can just look at the video and remind yourself um, where everything went anyway. So they're really easy to pull apart and put back together again. Um, as you saw in the video, it wasn't that difficult. And it was just a tiny little bit of filament can cause that problem because it would impede where the filament drew down. But once we got that out, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Even on the default settings, 
just, it, it came out beautiful. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I've got to print out, print out a few things. So I'll just, I'll chuck it on that and print, print them out in that. And then I'm going to do a test between that and the K1C that I have. See how they go time-wise and see how the quality of the prints go. We'll run it through my usual little tests. We'll get those um, the overhang tests and stuff that I usually do. And we'll run that. I might even do a toaster test, um, a tolerance toaster on them to see how they went as well and to see how they compare against each other. Uh, considering I sort of call the, the um, Ender 3v3 the, um, the K1 bed slinger. That's how I used to describe it when I was talking about it online. Anyway, so if you haven't subscribed also to me, there's also lots of groups on Facebook that can help you out. Um, if you do a search on Creality Official, most of the official Creality um, groups are under that heading. So Creality Official K1, Creality Official K2, Creality Official Ender, you know, that sort of thing. There's also one for the store, so Creality Official Store. There's one for their Falcons too, so their um, laser engravers and burners and cutters. Um, so that's it, like Creality Falcon, um, or Creality Official Falcon I'd be doing. And um, there's also the forums, if you haven't been hooked on the forums, and they got a Discord as well. So they're getting right into um, creating groups and stuff that will help people out with any of their problems. Um, I see a lot of people online complaining that damn thing doesn't work when I got it. I, um, I put it in like, if you buy a car, you teach yourself how to drive before you go to a car, buy a car. You don't buy a car and then expect the car, the bit that's already the car, to teach you how to drive. So if you're going to get a printer or you have a printer and aren't really too sure how it works, have a look on YouTube. There's heaps and heaps of people that show you how to do stuff on YouTube. Uh, and it's a really good resource. And if you do have problems, the people in these groups that I'm saying, that that's what I'm, I'm in, to three of the groups online and in a sort of like an official sort of capacity. I'm a group expert, as they call them. And I hop on and help try and help out as much as I can with problems. There's heaps of people like that, all willing to help you out. Ask a question. Be nice about it. Don't be rude. Um, there are a few that want to um, put a spanner in, um, you know, trolls and stuff like that, as they call them. Um, but just ignore them. There's lots and lots of people that want to help you. Um, and just ask the question, ask it nicely, and you get a nice response back. Uh, and those people that are a bit rude and say, oh, stupid, buddy, do this or do that, just ignore them. Don't have a go back. It just starts with wars. And it's just, it just becomes an unpleasant experience. But um, the um, people on the Creality groups uh, try to filter a lot of that out. And if you do that sort of thing, you're off the group. Um, so they just want to put people to be nice and happy and, and helpful with each other. And I, I, I applaud Creality for doing it. I mean, how many um, 3D printer manufacturers have their own groups where they've got you know, official Creality people on the groups um, sitting there running these groups and trying to um, organise help and assistance and repairs and stuff like that as much as they can. Um, just like a car. If you've got, had a car, you take it to a mechanic. Um, if you knew how to do it yourself, you do it yourself. Okay. So the mechanics in this part are the um, online mechanics in the groups that help you out, tell you how to do things. Yeah. So that's that. Okay, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you when I post my video on my K1C and my Ender 3V3. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Okay. Bye. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate the support. You might like one of these or one of these videos um, that I've made in the past, so feel free. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.